Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you for joining us at the HBKU College of Law Graduate Studies Information Session today. Dean Susan, the floor is yours. Thank you very much, Sandia, and good evening to everyone. I'm Susan Karmani and the Dean of the College of Law at the Hamad bin Khalifa University. Um, thank you for joining us. Um, it's a it's a privilege to introduce you to our unique law school in the heart of the Middle East, uh, where international trade and investment, uh, sports, energy, healthcare, and the arts are important drivers of a vibrant economy. Um, HBKU Law opened its doors um, in 2015 under a strategic partnership between HBKU and Northwestern University Pritzker School of Law. Um, we started with our three year Juris Doctor degree program, which is a graduate uh, degree in law based on the US uh, model and um, in which law is a first degree or in, in which law is the, the first degree after you have taken already uh, one degree. So our students have at least a Bachelor of Arts or a Bachelor of, of Science. In fact, we've had students who have had master's degrees as, as, as well as even uh, medical degrees or, or PhDs. In 2019, we launched our two LLM programs, um, and you'll learn more about them today in international law and foreign affairs and international economic and business law. And in 2021, we launched our uh, Doctor of Juridical Science, or the SJD, the equivalent of, of the PhD with a strong research focus. Uh, we have a very dynamic environment in which uh, uh, you can prepare to become a lawyer uh, with small classes and endless opportunities both within and out of the class. Now, uh, this evening, a lot of our faculty members are, are, are teaching. Uh, our classes are from 4 to 8 p.m., so uh, that enables students to work, uh, work during the day. Yet, we have some of the faculty uh, who are with us and others will arrive, uh, another person will arrive around 6 o'clock. I will need to bow out at around uh, 5.50 p.m. or so because I am uh, teaching comparative civil procedure uh, uh, this evening. Now, I'm delighted that uh, joining us this evening is uh, Dr. Damalola Olawi, who is here. He's our Associate Dean for Research and Chair of our Graduate uh, Programs Committee. He teaches in the area of environmental law, energy law and an award-winning course on entrepreneurship law. Um, uh, also with me this evening is uh, Dr. George Dimitropoulos, who is the Associate Dean for Academic uh, Affairs and Director of the SJD um, uh, program. Um, Professor Dimitropoulos will then be uh, joined by Professor Hilary Bell, who will be um, coming around 6 p.m. or so, and she is the director of the JD program. Professor Bell teaches uh, legal research and writing, trial advocacy, negotiations, construction law and development. And she also is very active in coaching our uh, moot court uh, teams and the like. Professor Dimitropoulos teaches administrative law, law technology and IP, as well as a number of graduate research courses for our LLM and SJD um, students. Cindy, I don't see the screen, uh, but uh, if you could just share the content, please. Thank you uh, very much. This is sort of a roadmap of what we can expect this evening. I gave you just a very quick overview. And what I am going to do now is just briefly introduce you to the faculty who uh, cannot be with us uh, uh, this evening because they are teaching as well as to show you pictures. It's always good fun. Before we do that, let me just step away quickly and shut the door. I'm hearing the call to prayer and I don't know if you can hear it on the sound, but I want to make sure that the sound is clear. Just one second, please. Sorry about that, but that will enable us to stay focused as well. So throughout the, the evening, um, if you have any questions, please feel free to uh, uh, post them in the Q&A tab on the lower side of the WebEx uh, screen. Uh, just simply click on those three, uh, those three dots and address your questions to all um, uh, panelists. That way we'll be able to address them in uh, the Q&A uh, 
uh, session. Now, we are a world-class provider of legal education. Uh, we have a very strong international reputation, particularly in the area of innovative teaching um, and, and, and research. As I mentioned um, earlier, our students um, um, in the JD program, for example, and the LLM and the SJD, they all have a previous uh, degree. And in the JD, they can come from a variety of, 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 uh, of disciplines and, and the like. And we, we teach using a truly comparative method, um, examining uh, the law from the perspective of the civil law, the common law, and Sharia. All of this is relevant to 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 Qatar because each of those uh, bodies of law shapes Qatari uh, uh, law. Uh, we believe that our graduates should be problem solvers. So a lot of times in 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 uh, class, the way we 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 teach is by teeing up problems or analyzing cases, uh, understanding the rationale of the law understanding ways in which perhaps the law could be uh, uh, subject to various interpretations and the like. Uh, we think of our graduates as being able to work here in Qatar in terms of the legal system here, but clearly outside as, 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 as well. So um, if I could just briefly introduce you to, to the faculty. Uh, as I mentioned, you know, we have the three programs, the Juris Doctor program, uh, the Master of, of Laws program, the, the two LLMs, and then our Doctor of, of, of Juridical Science. Uh, we have a uh, substantial community here in terms of the number of cutteries, for example, close to 65 uh, uh, 5%. Um, throughout the years, we've, we've had a variety of nationalities uh, rep represented, and the current student body has 11 nationalities um, um, in it. But in terms of the, of, of the faculty, I think one of the, one of the reasons why you should be interested in our law school is just our amazing faculty, um, both in terms of their ability to teach, but their research areas, uh, their engagement outside of the law school in terms of, of working with lawyers, working with international institutions, working with law faculties around the world. And um, and the like. So you can see their their uh, their pictures here. But uh, uh, I'm delighted to to um, to introduce you to them. We first have uh, Professor Ilias uh, ben Bantikis, who is an expert in international international law, international dispute resolution, and 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 contracts. Um, and then uh, Professor Zachary Kalo. Professor uh, Kalo is. Uh, uh, been active in sports law here in Qatar um, and has uh, been teaching a course on uh, on sports law. He also teaches uh, uh, property property law and he's uh, also taught uh, uh, legal legal ethics. He's uh, starting to build himself as a sports law arbitrator too, which is very important in the lead up. Uh, to the World uh, Cup. Uh, Dr. Uh, Damalol Olawi, who's here with us this evening, as I mentioned earlier, is uh, the Associate Dean for uh, Research. And he works in the area of environmental law and focusing a lot on sustainability as well as uh, energy law. And he has uh, the award-winning course on entrepreneurial uh, 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 law, entrepreneurship law, where the students uh, advise uh, clients throughout the course of a company when it's a startup until its unfortunate uh, 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 demise. And then uh, Professor uh, uh, George Dimitrafis is here, Associate Dean for Academic Affairs. I mentioned that uh, he works and teaches in the area of, of administrative law, uh, law, technology, and IP, and also in a number of other areas, investment in, in trade and, and the like. Uh, he uh, was recently given award for his work in setting up our SJD program and particularly some innovative features with that uh, uh, program. Uh, Professor Hillary Bell will be with us shortly. She's the, the JD uh, uh, coordinator, and I mentioned Professor Bell a, a few minutes ago, who teaches legal research and writing, coaches our moot court team, trial advocacy, and the like. One of the fun projects she's working on now is our students will be going down to the Qatar International Court, to the courtroom itself, to present oral arguments, and uh, she's leading up uh, that important um, um, initiative.
And then we have Professor um, Eleni Polymanapolo, who works in the area of international human rights law, uh, media law, and cultural heritage. Uh, her work is very important, obviously, for, for Qatar, uh, given the importance of media here, Al Jazeera, uh, but also on the cultural heritage front. She's really um, been making a big mark. She had an important fellowship to University College London, and she'll be talking to our faculty uh, later this week about cultural heritage law and Islam. So we're really excited about that. And then uh, Barry, um, Professor Barry Solomon, he teaches constitutional law. Uh, but also uh, Professor Solomon uh, teaches uh, uh, healthcare law and torts. And in the healthcare area, one thing he's working on right now that may be of interest is in the area of precision medicine and setting up uh, a guidelines for uh, the use of artificial intelligence in preci precision medicine. AI is starting to become the focus of the research of, of a number of our faculty uh, members. Um, and then we have Dr. Alexander Ezenaga, who is uh, an expert in uh, tax law. For those of you who are uh, following the news in the region, um, there have been uh, VAT taxes imposed in some of the countries. It's a conversation here, of course, in Qatar. But there are important developments going on at the international level with regard to multinational corporations and ta taxation. This is his area of expertise, but he also teaches uh, business um, associ associations and um, commercial law. I've had the pleasure of co-teaching with, with uh, Professor Zanagu. Um, and then uh, our most recent uh, faculty member to, to, to join is Professor Kyle Yip, who uh, works in the area of international criminal law, international humanitarian law, construction law and development, as well as global legal ethics. Uh, she came to the law faculty from, from private uh, practice in, 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 in Hong Kong, but was also teaching there. And we have on the faculty Aisha uh, El Nama. Aisha is, our, um, uh, is a graduate of the first JD class here at Hamad bin Khalifa University, and she is uh, uh, teaching uh, graduate level SJD research. Uh, courses and helping on LLM courses, and uh, her research is looking at um, intellectual property law, specifically in the area of, of patents. Um, the, the faculty have outstanding credentials. I always like to brag about them as much as I can. Degrees from Oxford, Cambridge, Harvard, Yale, some of the best law schools in, 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 in the world, and they're, uh, as I mentioned a few minutes ago, uh, engaged um, in in the community, defined in a very in a very broad sense. So, if you're interested in our law school, I think the principal reason why you would select Hamad bin Khalifa University College of Law is because of this amazing talent that we have we have here in in, in Doha in Education um, City. So, with that background, what I would like to do is to pass the floor over to uh, Professor Olawi, who is uh, uh, chairs our graduate programs. Um, and uh, I will, I will uh, uh, look forward to your remarks, uh, pr uh, Professor. Uh, we always welcome hear hearing you, uh, hearing from you, and I know that you'll need to bow out coming up at around 5.55 to go, to go teach, but the floor is yours. Thank you very much, Dean Susan, and it's always a great pleasure talking to um, those interested in our fantastic programs. Um, as the Dean mentioned, I chair the Graduate Programs Committee, and this committee is responsible for selecting those that will be admitted into the LLM and the SJD program. Uh, and, and of course, the committee also worked very hard in putting together these programs. And, and one of the uh, top things on our minds when we were designing these programs is to uh, offer programs that will put our graduates at the forefront of international leadership. Um, we want our graduates to be operating at the highest level, whether you're talking about economic, economics and business or you're talking about international law and foreign affairs and diplomacy. Um, we, we want our students to enjoy the very best uh, of education as though they were in some of the best schools. Like the Dean mentioned, uh, we, we got our degrees. Some, uh, th those of us on faculty did our degrees uh, um, in, in, in some of the best institutions. So we thought, how can we bring that world-class education here as well and replicate the same and 
And we've seen over the last few years that we've been running the programs that we've done exactly that. And even beyond, we've been able to infuse um, not just the international and comparative aspect, but also, also how our students can use that knowledge to become leaders in advancing the Qatar National Vision 2030, which is our core aim. So you see that um, in addition to the LLM programs, where you can either choose to specialize in economic and business law and international law and foreign affairs, we also have the SJD program that prepares um, those that would want to work in research intensive uh, sectors, like whether you're talking about academia or working for research institutes or think tanks, uh, the SJD program prepares you exceptionally for that. And my colleague, uh, Dr. George, will be talking a lot more about um, these programs uh, over the course of this meeting. But as you'll see in the next slide, one of the core things that we emphasize is connection to the industry. As the Dean mentioned, we, we do not just train our students uh, to know the law, we train them to apply the law in global context. So you'd see that some of our uh, graduates have, you know, uh, have uh, been able to work in some of the leading uh, industries, whether in the private sector or in the public sector, uh, whether you're talking about cement or, or the Ministry of Commerce and Industry or the Supreme Committee for Delivery and Legacy. We also have graduates at Qatar Energy, at the Ministry of Foreign Affairs. As a matter of fact, our LLM programs, we do uh, receive a number of uh, uh, students from the Ministry of Foreign Affairs and we receive and we have students that have also left our programs to work uh, in, in, in some of these ministries. And you'll see that in addition to that on the next slide, you find that even at the uh, some of our students have left our programs to go for further degrees. And we have some of our graduates that have been admitted uh, at Harvard. I think two of them, as a matter of fact, uh, have been admitted at Harvard. We have some that have gone on to Duke Law some to NYU, New York University, Georgetown, and the Graduate Institute in Geneva, which again emphasizes uh, the strong international law training that they receive from us that prepares them to operate at the highest level in the world. And, and of course, uh, in the next slide, you see that we also focus a lot on industry connections. You'll see that, uh, as the Dean mentioned, uh, some of our students will be going to the Qatar International Court and Dispute Resolution Center to further on the skills on how to argue uh, real life in courtrooms. We, we, we've also organized a number of uh, programs with the, with the Qatar International Court, a number of uh, seminars, workshops, and events. We also have, uh, thanks to the uh, uh, work of our dean with the American Society of International Law and our leadership role in the Executive Council there, we maintain a very strong relationship with, with the American Society, one of the leading bodies in international law and we, we, we participate actively and we encourage our students to be involved as well. Same as the JASO Institute, uh, 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 the, the Association of Environmental Law Lecturers, which was homegrown from us, you know, uh, in, 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 which emphasizes our, the, the, the importance we place to be in the regional orb in terms of advancing education, all around education in areas of environment, sustainability and resource management. Uh, and, and of course, our connections and, and, and uh, affiliations with the World Intellectual Property Organization, which some of you would have seen in the news lately, that we've been uh, we've been developing a wide range of initiatives with WIPO, which which is the the, the, the number one uh, organization when it comes to intellectual property. And also, for those of you interested in environment and sustainability, we have a long-standing relationship with the United Nations Environment Program, which is the leading global organization when it comes to environmental uh, uh, law uh, and, and advancing sustainability. So our emphasis on this industry and international connection is to prepare our students to be at the forefront of debates, at the forefront of interactions when it comes to um, not just learning in the classroom, but also understanding how their skills will connect, how their skills will, will, will prepare them to be global leaders in the industry when they leave us. So we, we, we very much look forward to um, learning more about you. Um, and like I always say, when preparing your, your applications, uh, we, we, we look forward to learning more about your interest, whether it's in environment, whether it's in healthcare, whether it's in sustainability, we have a wide range, uh, a number of expert faculty members that will be able to guide you to achieve your, your goals. Thank you. 
Great. Thank you so much, uh, Dr. Damalolowi. That was wonderful overview. Uh, we have a, a few minutes here before I know you have to go off to uh, to class. Um, you you've been here for a number of years now, and you actually created uh, the ASELMU, the Association dealing with environmental law, the like. Can you tell me a bit about the engagement of students in in areas that you're interested in? For example, environmental law. I know you've co-authored a paper with a student and now we have a, a student society and environmental society and upcoming events they may be engaged in yes thank you very much uh, dean the, the in fact asam is one of our very very important initiatives as you mentioned and that's because it provides a practical opportunity for students to be involved in understanding the environment energy and sustainability issues and, 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 and like you mentioned, when I arrived here, I was looking uh, to see how we can uh, develop homegrown approaches to addressing some of the environmental challenges that the whole world is facing, including the region. And so the idea of uh, developing scientific cooperation uh, and also exposing our students to a wide range of ideas beyond just Qatar was topmost and on, on my mind at the time. And uh, we were able to get uh, initial grants from the United Nations Environment Program, UNEP, as well as the Qatar National Research Fund to be able to develop this network that will bring together academics from across the region to study environmental issues, whether you're talking about climate change or uh, transboundary movement of waste and, 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 and the likes. And since 2018, uh, we've been able to achieve just that. Uh, and now our students are also involved actively, like you mentioned, I've been able to co-author uh, about two papers with some of our students. Uh, we've also had some of our students now starting their own energy and environment club. Uh, it's an entirely student-run uh, club, which will allow them. So, so you see that not only have we been able to create the necessary uh, awareness that we're looking to create, but of course, we're already well prepared to pass on the baton to the next generation uh, as they will be much more involved and engaged in understanding how they can use their knowledge of the law to uh, address complex uh, environment, I'll call them complex and wicked environmental problems of our time, especially climate change. Can I, can I follow up on that then? I think our student uh, candidates would be interested in, because you also have this background in energy law. I think if, if it's fair to say you came to environmental law through, through energy law, how do you, do you, do you have challenges trying to, to reconcile the two and, and the like? It's it's always a question that comes up. Uh, as you rightly said, I I actually moved uh, to Doha from from Canada, from Calgary, Canada, where I was practicing oil and gas law in Alberta, uh, the the oil and gas rich province of, of the country. So I was actively uh, advising uh, sovereigns and corporations on uh, oil and gas transactions, which which was, which was my interest at the time and and and, and background. Um, but you'd see that the, even the oil and gas sector is facing what we call the transition, in which we all realize that as important as the oil and gas sector is, there is also a need to then begin to ask questions on how we can ensure that uh, we sustainably manage the environmental footprints of that industry. So that so my experience in the industry gave me that first-hand knowledge. I understand the environmental problems. I understand what the industry is doing. And so I've been able to then uh, infuse some of that knowledge into making balanced recommendations. I know exactly the sort of recommendations that the industry may not be open to listening to, and I know the ones they will be keen to hear. So, and I encourage my students to think of it that way as well. We must communicate effectively with, with the industry and help them uh, you know, achieve that sustainability that we all like to see. So it's good that the students are, are, are able to uh, I, you know, uh, I tell them that energy and environment is is, is uh, tied uh, together, and it's very difficult to separate uh, both. So it's good to understand. And 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 thanks to uh, the support of the university, we've been able to introduce two distinct courses: energy law, where they understand the oil and gas industry, as well as environmental law, a separate course whereby they then deal with the sustainability issues and how to achieve green growth in in the oil and gas industry. Right. Yeah, that's very interesting because it's it it the world should not just be either or. And I think when you're talking about energy and the environment, if you have that approach, you're 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 doomed to fail. Instead, we have to figure out how to 
collectively, you know, build solutions. And that's what you're doing in the class. And also like in your energy law class, you, we have a professor from Cambridge University who's been coming every year to teach elect, uh, electricity law too. So that's really exciting. Well, I know Damalola, you have class coming up and uh, good luck with your class. Thank you so much for, for, for sharing your insights and your enthusiasm for our law school. Appreciate it a great deal. One person I forgot to introduce, Lana, I forgot to introduce you. I apologize. Uh, Lana Asfor is with us this evening and she's from our admissions office as, as, as well. And I just wanted to make sure that I uh, acknowledged, acknowledged her. Um, we're still waiting on Professor Bell, I believe. I don't know if she's here yet, but I will pass the floor over to uh, Professor uh, Dimitropoulos. Uh, George? Thank you, Susan. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. I'm uh, really glad uh, to be here with you today, as well as, you know, with uh, all of our prospective uh, students. And uh, I look forward to discussing, you know, uh, uh, all possible kinds of uh, programs that our law school uh, offers uh, here. So uh, then uh, let us then proceed as Sandy, I believe, is suggesting, namely, you know, that, you know, we discuss first what we call our uh, graduate programs uh, and then, you know, move on when uh, our colleague Hillary will have joined, you know, move on to the uh, JD program. Right, Susan? That makes that makes abundant sense. Thank you. Yes, Thank perfect. you so much. You and I may need to bow out, but I'll stay here till ahead, uh, Professor Bell comes. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much, Susan. So uh, as uh, uh, the Dean explained before, as well as uh, my colleague, uh, Professor Damilola explained before, our law school offers four different programs, right? It offers, you know, our JD program, which is, the, you know, the, uh, uh, the, uh, the program that, you know, the law school was established with, uh, let's say, the Jewish Doc Doctor program. But on top of it, it offers another three uh, programs, you know, uh, uh, using, you know, the kind of a language that the American law schools uh, do, we call those our graduate uh, programs. Namely, you know, we offer uh, the highest degree that HPKU College uh, of Law uh, does, namely, you know, the Doctor of Juridical Science, the SJD program, which is, you know, a PhD in law. But, you know, again, we use the uh, uh, more of kind of uh, American uh, term for it, as well as two uh, LLM programs, an LLM International Economic and Business Law, as well as an LLM International Law uh, and Foreign Affairs. You know, as the Dean said before, I'm uh, the Associate Dean for Academic Affairs. So, you know, uh, I deal uh, with the uh, very hardcore issues of our uh, JD uh, program. And I'm also a member of the SJD, pro uh, of the, um, I'm sorry, of the uh, Graduate Programs uh, Committee, as well as the SJD Program Director. So, you know, I'm in kind of uh, both worlds of uh, of the law school. Now, let us focus in on our uh, 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 LLM uh, programs, if we may. So, we have a wonderful uh, LLM, International Economic and Business Law. The kind of things that I would like to discuss with you are the following. Uh, uh, six things, in fact, the years, the focus of each and every program, the courses, uh, the thesis requirements, uh, funding, as well as, you know, uh, uh, a couple of words about our current students. Now, number one, uh, the, the years. The LLM, National Economic and Business Law, is a one-year uh, uh, program. Its focus, as its title obviously says, it's uh, on international economic law, which includes international investment law as well as international trade law. We have uh, two courses, in fact. Uh, uh, focused exactly on those uh, very issues, uh, as well as on international business law. International business law means uh, international business transactions, namely, you know, the private law uh, aspects of the international uh, economy. Okay, and uh, uh, we offer a, a, a series of uh, courses that are both a uh, core to the LLM program, as well as, you know, from outside the LLM program that are based on our JD uh, program offering. Okay. So in the core uh, curriculum of the, of, the, of the LLM program is a course on uh, research methods in law. That's in the first semester of your studies. And in the second semester, we offer a, a course on global uh, legal ethics. On top of it, we offer a variety of uh, courses uh, from our JD uh, program that our students, you know, either have to take or, you know, are invited to take as, el as electives, okay? Among which entrepreneurship law that my colleague, uh, Professor Damilola, uh, uh, teaches. And as the Dean said before, you know, it's an award-winning uh, course, uh, as well as a contract uh, uh, law, which, you know, is very unique at HPKU College of Law, among many other courses, because we really uh, offer this uh, transnationalist comparative perspective that I promise you won't be able to find in any other uh, law school uh, 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 in the same way that you find it uh, here with us. Now, except for the coursework, 
which is you know for 26 uh, uh, credits we uh, 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 we ask our students it's mandatory for our students to also write an LLM thesis right you may already know that the HPKU is a, is a research led research oriented university so you know the research component is kind of very important for this as well as you know most of our uh, 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 programs practically the idea here is that you know you uh, come up with an idea before coming into the program and you help we help you further develop it that you know focuses in on one of those uh, two areas namely international economic law and or international business law and you know you work on it uh, for the duration of uh, the program you know a couple of examples for example i myself you know i am supervising two uh, students one is writing about you know the process of domestication of international uh, investment law namely you know about domestic investment laws and the relationship with uh, the international uh, uh, rules of investment law and i have another a student that works on uh, crypto uh, currencies crypto assets and in fact you know she's studying uh, munira is studying the uh, uh, the uh, idea of uh, adopting uh, cryptocurrencies as what we call legal tender namely you know official uh, currency you know these are uh, this is, these are just examples of you know uh, 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 legal issues that you will be invited uh, to deal with now uh, um, when you will have finished the coursework which is in two semesters one academic year you will have a little more time to finish up your llm thesis in fact you know we give our students 12 months to you know complete this thesis requirement and you know under exceptional circum circumstances uh, some more months uh, to go now when it comes to the funding to funding this uh, program has no funding i i know lana will uh, mention that later as well but you know uh, uh, this there is you know a fee that you will have to uh, pay for this uh, program you know it's you know it's um, manageable really you know it's at around you know 15000 uh, us uh, dollar and this is something that you know you will have to cover uh, on your own but i promise it's uh, definitely worth it now uh, as i told you before we have uh, uh, many wonderful uh, students uh, on uh, uh, on this uh, program that in the years that we've uh, run this uh, program that uh, uh, are all uh, uh, lawyers as a matter of their background right because in order to be able to be admitted in this uh, program uh, you have to have a, an llb uh, uh, already or you know previous studies in law let's say okay now uh, let us start moving to our next uh, program uh, our next llm program the llm international law and foreign affairs now the structure here is the same okay it's a one-year program the focus is different the focus is on international law more you know uh, traditional uh, general international law related uh, issues and uh, uh, um, uh, uh, foreign affairs the relationship you know with uh, international relations political science a more you know interdisciplinary approach uh, here uh, 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 so the courses, the core courses are the same as with our previous LLM program. Namely, you know, we offer a course in research methods in law, as well as a course in global legal ethics in the two uh, uh, semesters. And these are, you know, the courses that are dedicated to our LLM students. Now, you may recall that our, my colleague, uh, Professor Damilola said, you know something, you know, we try to bring here our experience from the different universities, top universities that, you know, uh, our faculty, you know, has had the chance to uh, study at, right? Which is exactly right. But we know we've, we've gone a, a step beyond that even, you know. Uh, our experience has shown that, you know, other LLM uh, programs do not help, uh, you know, indoctrinate students, let's put it like this, into, you know, the methods that are necessary to write and design an LLM thesis, right? So this is exactly the purpose of those core courses of our LLM uh, programs. Now, on top of it, on top of the core LLM uh, 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 courses, we also offer, uh, uh, you will also have to take a couple more courses, either, you know, mandatory courses or elective courses from the broader uh, JD uh, uh, curriculum. And I see my colleague uh, Hillary is here with us. Hi, Hillary. Good to have you with us. And, you know, Hillary will be explaining, you know, uh, uh, which uh, those courses are. But here, you know, in, in the LLM International and Foreign Affairs, you will have an even greater uh, choice than in the LLM International Economic uh, and Business Law to, you know, to uh, 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 cherry pick uh, courses from uh, the JD uh, uh, curriculum. Now, the thesis requirements are the same, right? You know, I won't be going uh, into this. You will have, again, you know, to write a, 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 an LLM a thesis uh, for this uh, uh, program uh, um, and again you know you'll have to select your topic the topic uh, on your own 
Again, you know, we don't have funding for this program, so you know, it's you know, you will have to be uh, self-funded. And our current students, that, and that's a difference with the previous program. Our current students and our students, as a matter of uh, admission, uh, uh, come you know from uh, many different uh, backgrounds. You know, this program does not only admit uh, students that already have an LLB, right, a bachelor's in law, or you know, similar studies in law. Uh, rather, you know, we invite applications from a much broader spectrum of the social sciences. Okay, Lana will further discuss about this uh, uh, later. Now, if we may move to the next uh, uh, program, you know, obviously a program very close to uh, my heart, our SJD uh, program, our Doctor of Juridical Science. Our Doctor of Juridical Science is exactly, you know, what its title says. It's a, a PhD in law. It's the highest degree that HBKU College of Law uh, offers. It's a doctoral degree, right? You know, uh, 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 it's for students that are uh, dedicated really to uh, uh, the academic development of, uh, uh, of uh, uh, to, to, to research, let's say, you know, let's put it like this uh, to start with. So it's a three-year uh, program. Uh, the focus is practically yours, right? You are the tailors of your own uh, program. The coursework is kind of light. So practically you will have only courses in the first year of uh, the program. And again, the coursework remains kind of light. You will have the advanced versions of the LLM courses that we saw before. So a, 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 um, an advanced research methods in law course, an advanced global legal ethics uh, uh, course, as well as for the ones of you that will be admitted into our SJD program without having gone through, our, uh, uh, through one of our LLM programs, we will have to take the LLM equivalent courses. Otherwise, that's it, frankly, with one little exception. The exception is, uh, 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 and they didn't mention this before, something that we're very proud of, uh, our SJD colloquium. This is a student-run uh, uh, course, okay, uh, uh, which is supported by uh, uh, our lecturer Aisha uh, al Nama, that is, you know, really proactive in, you know, helping uh, our student design their course. But practically here, this is a course that allows you to design it in the way you want it. You want to invite uh, uh, professors, you know, from HBKU College of Law, from outside HBKU College of Law, from the broader education city community, name it, right, you're free to do it. But the idea is, you know, uh, peer interaction, to get together with the group of colleagues and discuss about, you know, pertinent issues of uh, law, of your SJD dissertation, uh, name it, okay. For example, last week, our students invited, you know, one of the most famous, maybe, uh, you know, I will dare to say, you know, the most famous uh, 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 editor, in uh, uh, the history maybe of international law, who used to work at uh, Cambridge University uh, Press, Finola O'Sullivan, to give tips on how to, you know, publish in, uh, 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 you know, uh, the best, you know, uh, peer review journals, as well as, you know, how to publish your uh, SJD uh, dissertation. Now, you know, I've mentioned already twice this idea of the SJD dissertation. What is the SJD dissertation? It's practically the equivalent of the LLM thesis that we saw before. It's the cornerstone, really, of the SJD program. Practically, the idea is that, you know, you come with, you know, a certain uh, idea into uh, uh, the program that, you know, you will continue uh, developing all through those three uh, years. This program is, is again, you know, research-led, research-oriented. It's for the ones of you that are interested in, you know, doing a deep dive into, you know, a, 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 a research uh, question that you may have. For example, you know, we have at the moment, you know, three students in this uh, uh, program that, you know, study, you know, a very different uh, kind of uh, uh, things. Namely, you know, the one is uh, studying, uh, you know, the development of uh, CRISPR in uh, biotechnology and the legal ramifications thereof. Another one is discussing the idea of, you know, adopting a, a Sharia-inspired framework for construction disputes. And a third student that is studying the digital economy and digital uh, trade and the extent to which, you know, WTO, WTO World Trade Organization rules uh, are fit to serve, serve the causes of uh, digital trade and the digital uh, uh, economy, okay? So um, uh, this program is very selective, okay? It will only admit three to five uh, students uh, per year. And, you know, this uh, program started uh, last year. We admitted three students and we we're looking at admitting another three to five students in the next uh, uh, academic year. Now, when it comes to funding, uh, we have limited funding for three to five slots uh, uh, again for uh, uh, some of you uh, that goes all the way up to 80% 
of the overall tuition fee every year. Let me add one very final uh, point before handing the floor over to my colleague uh, uh, Hillary. Namely, you know, uh, there is another innovation. You know, this uh, program is, you know, is, uh, you know, I'm forgetting about a couple of uh, the important elements of the program, but I can uh, reassure you that it's a very innovative program, both for HBKU, but, you know, uh, otherwise as well, because it will allow you, because of the light coursework, to also uh, uh, register for any other course at HBKU. You know, we've managed, you know, and we've discussed this with the university that, you know, our students will have access to practically any other uh, course at HBKU and they will have the chance to audit and uh, uh, register for any course at uh, HBKU. This is, you know, to help our uh, small SJD community uh, integrate into the broader HBKU uh, community. I think that's it. You know, I hope I have, for, uh, have not forgotten uh, anything, you know, too important, but, you know, I guess we'll have the chance to further discuss about everything during our Q&A uh, session. Hilary, the floor is yours. Welcome. George. Um, sorry for my late coming to the session. I was teaching um, the JD students in trial advocacy and the debate because we're cross-examining witnesses and it got quite heated. So I was slightly delayed. Uh, apologies for that. So for anyone who's interested in the Juris Doctor, this is, I would say, the flagship degree of the College of Law. This is our, the founding programme that we started with in a strategic partnership. Uh, with Northwestern University in the US, who helped us devise a curriculum specific to Qatar and the MENA region. Um, the degree, it's a law degree, it's an initial law degree, which will, will be recognised by the Bar Association in Qatar as the um, degree that you would need if you wanted to become a practising lawyer here. There are more qualifications you need to become a lawyer, but what the main one is a qualifying law degree, and this would satisfy that requirement. It is a three year program. It's a full time degree, but it's taught over part time hours and most of our students work and have families and take the course. So it is possible to complete this part time. Our classes take place between 4 p.m. and 8 p.m. Sunday to Wednesday. There are very occasionally Thursday classes and very occasionally weekend classes. I think that happens once ever in your three years, but I want to mention it now. The degree has been designed for people who have no knowledge of law. You need a bachelor's degree. It can be in any subject. It can be in law. We have had several students with LLBs come and take our course because there's still a lot to learn because of the comparative approach that we take. Usually, if you study an initial law degree, you will learn the law of one particular jurisdiction. I took my law degree in Scotland and I learned laws of the UK and particularly Scots law. However, if you take your initial law degree in, in HBKU and the College of Law, you will learn comparative law. You will understand how contract law works in Qatar, but you will also understand how it works in the two main legal systems that operate in the world, namely common law and civil law. And while Qatar is a civil law system, you will separately learn the particulars of Qatar law, um, enabling you to work within the legal system here, but with further reach to understand how legal systems operate in other countries. We are aware that there's a lot to learn in law and that you're coming here most likely with no legal background. So the degree is structured to take you through foundational courses, the courses that are essential to understand first and foremost, so you can build on this knowledge with more professional training, more professional skills, and subjects that are particularly relevant to Doha um, and the MENA region generally. In particular, we look at construction and infrastructure development law. This is a course I teach as I formerly practiced as a construction lawyer in Qatar. We will also look at criminal law and procedure, energy law, environmental law, healthcare law. Qatar is setting itself up as a hub healthcare provider, and the legal rights that associate with that are far reaching. Human rights law is very much topical, a, a topic of interest in the region. Finance and global investment, media law and sports law. We have targeted the main industries that are prevalent in Qatar and the MENA region, and we specifically teach these courses after the students have received a solid foundation in general legal subjects. You will also get skills training. You will understand how to think as a legal analyst, how to break down problems and how to very effectively communicate and plan strategy. Um, we also have internship opportunities, opportunities to take part in mock arbitrations internationally with hundreds of students from other institutions. 
We have had internships at local law firms, international law firms, the International Court of Justice. Almost any institution you want to target, we will assist you to the best, best of our abilities to get an internship there, provided it's relevant to the course. I'm not going to set up internships at MTV if MTV is even a thing. I think I've just shown my age to all of you present. It's not that unusual. Regarding funding opportunities, we have funding opportunities for our students for up to 80% tuition waivers. Um, this is an ideal degree if you've always wanted to be a lawyer or if you simply want to advance in your current job. If you want to take on a more leadership position, if you work with contracts, if you work with people, this is a degree that can help you advance in your current role, even if you don't plan to leave it and move to the legal team. If you have any questions regarding the JD, let me know in the q and I'm going to pass you on now to the wonderful Lana uh, Aspor from our admissions team, who will tell you what you need to get into these wonderful programmes. Lana. Thank you, Hilary. Welcome, everybody. Good evening. Uh, nice to have you all on here. I see that a couple of more questions have just come in, so I will try to address those. Um, and if I'm not able to in the talk, I will respond to you individually. Um, so just really briefly, I know some of this has already been covered, but I'll just go through it really briefly now. Um, a little bit about the admission requirements. Um, so actually there's a minimum 3.0 GPA as an admission requirement for um, all of our programs at um, Hamad bin Khalifa University. Um, as has been mentioned, applicants to the JD program uh, from all sorts of academic backgrounds are welcome to apply. So I know someone was asking, you know, if they've studied communications, um, are they eligible? And yes, the answer is, uh, you know, it's open. Um, Sandia, would it be possible to, oh, there we go. Perfect. Thank you. Okay. Uh, so requirements for the LLM programs, same, uh, minimum 3.0 GPA with a preference to given to those who have a 3.3. Um, so, as uh, Professor George mentioned, we have two LLM programs. Uh, one of them is sort of more, you know, is open to students from a wider range of backgrounds, and that's the LLM in International Law and Foreign Affairs. Um, so, as you can see on the slide, I'm showing here that um, <clears throat> applicants from law, international relations, history, economics, so a whole range of fields are welcome to apply to this program. But again, preference will be given to those with a 3.3 and those who have specifically majored in law, international relations, or a related field. Um, applicants to the LLM in international economic and business law do need to have a law degree, so either an LLB or a JD, um, in order to be eligible to apply uh, to this program. Uh, so just moving on to the next slide now for the SJD program, applicants must have a JD or LLM and preference will be given to um, HBKU's alumni, college specifically College of Law alumni, and preference to those with a 3.3. A little bit about the English proficiency requirement. Um, so what we generally ask for is an IELTS score of 6.5 or a TOEFL of 79. However, if you have studied um, in English, and meaning your entire undergraduate or graduate studies were in English, and you can provide a letter from your university confirming that, you just attach that with your application and then you would not be required to take the IELTS or the TOEFL exam. Uh, so just moving on to the next slide, um, a little bit about the application. So the application is on our website. Um, so you're welcome to, uh, to go ahead and have a look at it over there. Once you do submit the application, you will need to um, attach a, a many different documents. So I'm just going to take you through these briefly now. And if you have any questions, please do let me know. Um, first and most important are your transcripts. So by that, we mean your entire academic history, starting from your undergraduate studies onwards. Okay. So if you've done a master's somewhere, we still need to see your bachelor's uh, degree transcripts. And we don't just want your certificate. We want a very specific day breakdown of every single class you've taken and every single grade that you've received in those classes. And if you're coming from a university system where the, the, the GP, you're not from a GPA out of 4.0 uh, system or a 5.0 system, then we really do need you to provide a grading scale. And that's something that you can find either on the back of your transcript or you can ask your university's registrar. You may even find it um, on the university website. Again, if you're having trouble with that, just email us and we can guide you. Um, 
if you are not exempt from TOEFL or IELTS, you will need to submit that score. Um, if you are exempt, then you could just provide the letter. It does need to be an official letter from your university. Um, if you graduated from Education City, um, Qatar University's engineering program, you would not need to submit a letter to us. Um, personal statement. So this is a very, very important part of the application. You do need to tell us specifically why you're interested in the program that you're applying to. Um, so talk a little bit about yourselves, your background, um, why you're interested in the program and what you plan to do with it. Um, the faculty spend a lot of time reviewing the personal statements. So do um, use that as an opportunity to introduce yourself to the admissions committee. Um, if you are living in Qatar, you will need to submit a copy of your ID. Um, as well as, you know, everybody has to submit a copy of their passport. Um, CV is very important as well. Um, and then uh, you will need to submit two recommendation letters. The system for applying for letter uh, for submitting letters, excuse me, is a little bit different this year. Once you submit your online application, you'll be directed to a link where you can submit the names and emails of the faculty or colleagues or whoever you're going to ask to recommend you and then they will receive an automated uh, message with uh, information about how to submit your uh, reference form. If you are applying to the uh, LLM and SJD, I think this has been mentioned, but I'll just repeat it because it's really important. You do need to submit a research proposal. If you uh, need guidance, you have questions, please feel free to email us and we will connect you with somebody at the college who can um, guide you further in those areas. Um, admission deadline for international applicants has already passed. We do not have uh, confirmed dates for 2023 yet. However, those will be available soon. For Qataris and residents, the deadline is March 15. Um, this deadline is um, very, very important for those of you who are interested in applying for funding where funding is available. So as previously mentioned, there is no funding available for the LLM programs. However, if you are interested in applying for and being considered for funding to the LLM, uh, excuse me, to the SJD and JD programs, then you do need to apply by March 15th if you are living in Qatar, you're a national or resident of uh, Qatar. Um, so just the next slide has some contact information the link to the website where you can find the online application and basically everything that I've just talked about is also on the website. Um, and then the email address for any admission questions that you have. Of course, um, you know, I'll be around for a while on, on, in this session. If there's any, you know, other questions, please just type them in the chat. Thank you. Lana, thank you. Thank you so much. Uh, you know, uh, I think you're gonna have to be all the way until the end because most of the questions are admissions related uh, questions. But you know, before going into admissions, let us uh, highlight this again, right? We have another what, Lana? Another uh, uh, 25 days to go, right? For uh, the closing of ad of admissions. So you know, do hurry. So uh, uh, um, many thanks for the questions that you you know posed uh, in the uh, Q and A uh, 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 box. So, as far as I can tell, most of the questions are, you know, admissions related. Let me have a look at the ones that are not, in fact, and then I will hand over the floor again to uh, to Lana. So, many thanks, uh, Tamara, for your uh, question. So, you know, uh, I believe we uh, asked, uh, we responded to this question already, right? So, for the LLM programs, we do not have uh, funding. Namely, you know, all of our students, you know, cover, um, uh, uh, you know, their, uh, uh, you know, the uh, fees that are meant for their studies and the fee for the LLM programs is approximately at the range of you know 15,000 US dollars so you know you'll see especially you know in comparison to uh, um, what you would be paying you know uh, if you compare if you take into account the standard of living in the United States or even in the UK you know it's pretty reasonable I should say, you know, it's pretty, pretty uh, reasonable and, you know, the quality and the level of education, you know, uh, you will allow me to say, you know, it's to some extent, you know, much better than, you know, you will, what you would be getting abroad. Uh, that's the truth of the matter. You know, I've got to say that. So, uh, Lana, unless, you know, Hillary wants to say uh, to add anything, no? Never normally turn down the opportunity to speak, George, but I don't think there's any more questions for us. It's very unusual. Exactly. <laughs> Don't be shy. Sure, happy, happy to uh, to respond to these. So um, there was a question here about um, 
loans so for students, for those of you who are currently studying in Education City, um, the question is, can you use this program to repay loans? And the answer for that um, is actually, you would need to check with QF Financial Services um, about that and regarding what their policies are. Um, as that relates to uh, graduate studies. Um, I think I already answered this question. Uh, students from a communications background for the uh, JD program, the LLM and international law are, you know, of course, more than welcome to the apply. As mentioned for the SJD and international um, economic and business law, a law background is, um, is required for those programs. Um, I saw something else here. If your degree was taught in English and you can provide us a letter confirming that, then you do not need to take IELTS. Um, and then I see somebody has a more specific question here saying they do not have a GPA and that's totally fine. You still do need to submit um, all of your transcripts to us. So it says here, Asma, you did your master's in the UK. So you would just submit to us um, a copy of your you know, your transcript that shows all the courses that you took, how much credit you got for each course, and then the percentage, usually in the UK, it's um, out of 100, although there's, you know, sometimes exceptions to that, depending on where you studied. Um, so don't worry about not having a GPA. That's something that we will, um, you know, we'll look at your transcript and 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 figure things out. So no worries. Um, Avinash, I see here you have a question about you do not have so mark sheets are are similar the most important thing though um is that you provide something that shows a breakdown per per course so not just like year one year two year three because i know sometimes that's how the mark sheets are structured so just as long as it's detailed and it has a lot of information about what you received in each course then um that's totally fine um So international and, students, yes. Yeah, another one came in, right? Yes. Yeah. So admission for this um, academic year uh, is now um, is now closed. So it's just open for uh, people who are living in Qatar. So if you're living in Qatar and you're studying at a university here, so technically you're an international student here, you can still apply. So as long as you're here in Qatar, you can apply. If you're not physically here, unfortunately, you will have to uh, wait until next year, but please do stay in contact with us um, and uh, we'll have information shortly available about when the, the next intake will be. Um, I see there's a question here about accreditation and practicing law. Yeah, yeah uh, well, I you know, take that. Hilary, you know, allow me to start introducing this question. You know, the answer to this question, you know, you know that I like this, and then, you know, I'll hand over the floor to you. So, you know, it, please, you know, because we received that question, and, you know, we need to clarify uh, certain things, right? In Qatar, there is no uh, accreditation for universities or programs whatsoever, okay? So there are two separate things. There is uh, uh, licensing for universities, which obviously our university uh, has, right? Otherwise, you know, what we would be doing here would have been illegal. And, you know, we're lawyers who so would do illegal stuff, uh, uh, you know, most of the time, right? Uh, uh, and uh, uh, there is, you know, <laughs> there is uh, also, you know, the, the, the university, uh, um, whenever, you know, the, the sorry, the, the Ministry of Education, Whenever you know you, uh, 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 whenever the university comes up with a program, they kind of license the program too, right? You know, they acknowledge the, the the program. The Ministry of Education is in the process of establishing an accreditation body for the accreditation of university in this, uh, of university in the, of universities in the state of Qatar, right? That's a completely uh, separate uh, thing. Now. We need to separate another question, then I will hand over uh, the floor to my colleague Hillary, namely accreditation or licensing whatsoever from uh, uh, being eligible, right, to uh, uh, practice uh, as a lawyer. These are two completely uh, different uh, questions. Our students are definitely eligible to become lawyers here in the state of Qatar as well as abroad. Hillary. Yeah, so just to clarify what a profession is, a profession is, a, is a, a, a group of people who are regulated by a professional body. Okay, so to become a lawyer, you have to be subject to a professional body. That's usually a bar association. So the bar association, the Qatar Bar Association, 
recognises the HBKU degree as an initial law degree, is recognised by the Ministry of Justice to become a lawyer in Qatar, you have to meet some other qualifications. One of them is that you have to be Qatari. But does this degree qualify you to become a lawyer in Qatar? Yes, it does as one of the things that you need to qualify for. At an international level, if you want to qualify for the New York Bar, this would count as your initial law degree, but you will have to take an LLM in American law to tick off the American law requirements. But yes, HBKU law graduates have gone and qualified as lawyers under the New York Bar. They have also been accepted to top US law schools, including NYU Law School, Georgetown, Duke, um, we have two students studying at Harvard Law School this year. Yes, this degree is recognised internationally and you can practise law internationally, providing you meet the other requirements of the regulatory body. Exactly. Yes, go ahead. Just for example, you have to be a fit and proper person. You know, these are things that are required in every country in the world. You need to not be an arch criminal um, or a lunatic. That may only be a requirement in the UK, to be honest. But the, there are other requirements. But for the degree, yes, this degree satisfies those requirements. Fantastic. Exactly. Thank you so much, Hilary. And, you know, would you like to uh, say uh, something about, you know, the different you know positions that, you know, our students have gone on to take after uh, having finished our JD program? Yes, we have had students go on to the legal team of Qatar Energy. I'm so proud I didn't say Qatar Petroleum. I got that right. And um, we've got people go to the Ministry of Foreign Affairs, the Ministry of Commerce. I don't remember the correct name for that ministry. Commerce and industry. Um, yeah, help me out. Where else people have gone on for further studies? Um, so we yeah. have uh, we have one former student that is uh, currently you know a legal advisor to the deputy uh, uh, prime minister minister of uh, foreign affairs um in fact the same person who is at uh, harvard uh, uh, at the moment and um, we have another student that you know went on to uh, become the uh, attache of uh, qatar uh, at the WTO and the World Intellectual Property Organization in uh, in uh, Geneva, we have a student that you know currently uh, works as a legal advisor at Qatar Investment uh, Authority. We have a student that currently uh, practices law in uh, uh, Paris, uh, France. Uh, by the way, you know uh, Mohammed will be uh, sitting the New York bar next week. Uh, you know, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, I, I know because. You know, we're uh, co-authoring an article together, and you know, we've been uh, in touch in the last couple of weeks, you know, trying to finalize things. Um, you know, uh, thank God. You know, I've got to say, many, many successes. You know, for such a young uh, uh, law school, you know, at all those levels. And this is to respond to the question because you know, the question says uh, uh, accreditation in Qatar. You know, which is a completely different question in the U.S. to practice law as a lawyer as well as legal advisor, right? You know, uh, obviously, you know, uh, our students are eligible to become lawyers both here in Qatar. After having had, you know, their uh, 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 LLM studies in the United States, also in the United States, we have already uh, had a student that, you know, successfully, you know, f you know, uh, after having sat for the first time uh, the bar exam, you know, he was uh, successful, and have another one, you know, uh, uh, in the next uh, week, you know, taking the bar uh, exam. Um, right, I think that's it. What about the accreditation at international level for JD degree? Is it recognized internationally, right? I think Hillary already responded to that, but you know, let me, you know, uh, you know, uh, I'm going to say, you know, this uh, uh, issue kind of uh, bugs me because you know there is no accredit there is no accreditation international or whatsoever for uh, law schools or law degrees. Okay. I've got to reassure you about this. You know, we've done our homework here. You know, Hillary has been working on this issue for quite some time, myself as well. You know, our current dean, our previous uh, dean, no accreditations for law schools whatsoever. Okay. Uh, 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 there is, you know, something that, you know, you could call ABA accreditation. It's a recognition by yeah, the American. Are but... Checked by the Bar Association to make sure in that the they are States. adequately training. No, but even in other countries, but we are recognized by the Bar Association here. Our Qatar Bar True. Association approved the degree, but it's not an accreditation. Um, it's a titular exactly. difference, but as we know, as lawyers, titular differences are important. Exactly. And, you know, about the international recognition, you know, Hillary has covered this already, but I've got to tell you, you know, there is barely any other law school in the history of law schools that has had, you know, as many successes uh, uh, as our law school has had, you know, look from the first graduating batch of students, right? Uh, 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 one has gone on to, uh, you know, further pursue their studies at NYU, right? Uh, school of Law, one of the, you know, very top universities, uh, law schools in the world. Harvard uh, Law School, right? 
um, uh, uh, Geneva, the Geneva Graduate Institute, and then you know uh, uh, from the uh, third graduating batch, you know. Uh, uh, at uh, again Harvard Law School, uh, Duke uh, Law School, you know, the list is literally uh, endless, you know. So uh, when it comes to international recognition, you know, I can, you know, reassure, you know, there has been no uh, uh, law school, you know, more successful than this one in, you know, you know, placing its students, uh, you know, uh, after having graduated from our JD as well as, you know, our other programs too. Thank you, Abdallah. Do we have any other questions? Okay, if this is not the case, right, you know, uh, uh, guys, you know, just, you know, feel free to uh, reach out uh, to us, right? Uh, uh, Hillary, you know, for all issues that relate to uh, the JD program and beyond, obviously, uh, myself, you know, for the JD, for the LLM programs, the SJD program, uh, all our colleagues uh, uh, here, you know, obviously, Lana and our admissions, office for all issues that pertain to uh, admissions related uh, uh, issues um, you know we try to uh, cultivate and be you know a very uh, open uh, community uh, here and you know we will look forward to welcoming you uh, into our uh, community too so you know feel free to reach out to us uh, if there are no further questions, you know, you will allow me to thank uh, all my colleagues that have been here with us today. Uh, Lana, thank you so much. We did not uh, leave you last uh, this time as we did uh, <laughs> as we did the last time. So my colleague Hillary, thank you so much for, you know, leaving a class to rush into the info session. Uh, obviously, uh, Sandia Monis for having put everything uh, together for this uh, info session as she always does. Uh, Ezzedin Abdenebi, uh, again, you know, for, you know, uh, being, you know, he wants, he says he wants to be in the background, you know, for events, you know, he shouldn't, uh, in any event, you know, uh, many thanks on behalf of all of us, and we look forward to receiving your applications. Thank you so much, guys. Thank you. Have a good night, everyone. Bye -bye. And do get in touch with any questions.